the UK continental shelf. A volatile and challenging region, but one that has a history of rewarding bold and innovative development. RWE Dea has established itself as a long-term player here. And we've chosen the region for special focus in the future. That future is already taking shape. In the summer of 2012, just two years after sanction, a groundbreaking development produced first gas. Clipper South. Clipper South was discovered right back in the early 80s, but its reservoirs were considered too difficult to be commercially viable. It lay undeveloped for 30 years. Things changed for Clipper South when RWE Dare farmed into the field in 2009. The big problem with the geology of Clipper South is, is that it's very, very poorly permeable rock, by which we mean it's very difficult for the gas to flow through it. Development. So that brings its own sort of challenges. You know, can we actually produce a development which can produce at commercial rates with this level of permeability? This type of rock will have some degree of natural fracture in it that uh, will give you additional permeability and, and rate of gas from the well. But the challenge in this particular development for tight gas developments worldwide is to try and enhance that artificially. RWE Dare has a track record of producing from similarly tight gas reservoirs onshore in Germany. But the technology that's needed here, hydraulic stimulation, is cutting edge. And the Clipper South team plans to give it another twist, with multiple stimulation treatments along the length of an extended horizontal well. It's about splitting the rock with hydraulic force and then it's propping that hydraulic fracture with sand so that it allows gas to percolate into the fracture and transports itself from the rock to surface. RWE Dayers management are looking to develop the field in parallel with another major North Sea development at Brea. Brea and Clipper South have a big significance for the UK organisation because they changed the game here. They will triple and quadruple our production. We will become a much more important producer in the RWDA group and uh, in fact we will take more or less the majority in the gas production in Europe. In the summer of 2010, the Clipper South partners give the project their backing. A few months on and the platform is already taking shape. It's what's known as an NUI a normally unmanned installation, able to operate by remote control. So the scale of the platform is approximately double that we'd expect for a, a conventional North Sea unmanned platform. That's given us an extra dimension to this project, which has been quite exciting for us. Part of the reason for this added dimension is that the platform will also offer accommodation for up to 40 people. It's an unusual feature for an NUI, but it means that the stimulation team will be able to carry out complex stimulation operations from the platform. And that in turn means that they'll be able to release the drill rig earlier and so achieve significant cost savings. The operations team who will run the facility have been involved from the early stages of design. Their suggestions, based on first-hand experience of existing installations, will help to ensure that the finished article runs the way they want, safely and efficiently. It's critical that you have close interface, and we do that by way of regular meetings, regular reporting, but the teams have, have worked extremely well. We're a smaller organisation, but because we're a small organisation, we tend to talk to each other and communicate very well, and we tend to deliver good projects. A year after sanction, the project's making outstanding progress against its intensely demanding schedule. It's just unique in terms of the time pressure we're under to sort of pull it together and get it over the line alongside other projects. Where we are right now is getting all the, the final touches done, testing all the equipment, ensure that the platform is fit for habitation and then we will ship it offshore.
15 kilometers of pipeline will link Clipper South to the host platform from where the gas will be pumped ashore. But several months delay in the arrival of the pipeline vessel and persistent bad weather have caused significant holdups to the installation campaign. Even when the pipeline can begin, it'll be far from straightforward. This is the logs. That's the logs we have very much undulating seabeds, so we had to shave off the you know, peaks. And we found out our pipeline wasn't stable on the seabed, so we had to dig the seabed even further to place our pipeline within it, in the trench. Mercifully, there have been no such delays in the construction of the platform. By the summer of 2012, it's ready for a tour of inspection by the RWE DEA management and staff and by the partners in the project. It's really been a, a dramatic and exciting progress on the project. If we look from the key, key factor point of view, which is HSE, cost and schedule, then overall we're very happy with the project. We think it's moved very well. It's a very interesting project technologically, but it's very important to the future of the UKCS in terms of its ultimate recoverable gas resource. <laughs> Before long, Hirama are starting to upend the jacket, ready for its journey out to the field. And this is how they erect it, it's incredible, it's really incredible. Unfortunately, this Dutch summer is a lot like an English one. But the trailers roll on regardless. Soon the jacket is loaded out onto the cargo barge that'll take it out to the North Sea. Wind speed and sea state are critical for the installation of the jacket. For now, they're good. So the installation team decide to move straight ahead. They cut the sea fastenings and swing the jacket out across the sea towards its final position. The jacket represents a massive investment in time and money. And now it's held dangling just a few meters above the North Sea. The installation team keep a nervous eye on the weather, but this time at least the worst holds off and they're able to ease the jacket into place. They landed within just a few meters of its target location which will make hookup a lot simpler. Anchor piles driven deep into the seabed will hold it firm against the region's powerful currents. The installation of the jacket is a significant milestone for the project. And most important of all, it's been completed safely but there's not much time to savor the moment. Before long, the next phase of the installation will be underway. The team have got the go ahead and they're starting to roll the deck out towards the cargo barge. Hirama have completed the facilities on budget. No mean feat in an intensely competitive market. It's the fruit of long experience and engineering excellence, of course, but also of teamwork and collaborative spirit. You need cooperation between parties. Uh, we are really focusing on that, and I think RWE is doing that as well. They were tough many times, but they were also inspiring, challenging, and always, if we had a problem, looking with us for a solution, helping us and, and looking how could we do the best. We've had very good teamwork from both the development team, the commercial team, the drilling team, the subsurface team and the management team. We've had good support from partners and from Hamburg. So teamwork has been a key success factor in this project. This is the Oleg Strashnov, the advanced new heavy lift vessel that the team have chosen to install Clipper South's deck. Yeah, 
It's the first time this vessel has ever performed this type of installation. And everyone will rest a little more easily when the deck is safely in place. It takes time, experience and teamwork. But the planning pays off and the deck is eased accurately into place on the jacket. Soon a 14-strong operations team are ready to go on board. And before the night's out, the platform's ready to accommodate them. That's a remarkable achievement and testimony to all the pre-commissioning work that's been done in the fabrication yard. Early in 2012, the weather has finally relented, enough to allow the pipeline campaign to get underway. At their spool base in the Cromarty Firth, Technip have been loading the 12-inch pipeline onto the Apache lay barge. Before long, they've sailed out, close to the platform, sending the first sections down to the seabed. It's been a long wait, and it's taken a lot of patience and flexibility on all sides. Now they have to work fast to make up for lost time. In the initial phases of production, a jack-up rig will stand alongside the platform to handle drilling operations. For each well, the plan is to drill 8,500 feet down and then between 4 to 7,000 feet horizontally inside the reservoir. Once they reach the toe, the team will execute each stimulation in turn, starting at the toe and working back to the heel. In all, they'll create as many as eight hydraulic treatments on each well path to accelerate gas production from the tight reservoir rock. This is innovative technology, and it's being deployed in a challenging offshore environment. The drilling team needs to give careful attention to the economic, environmental, and above all, safety factors. In all of the processes we go through, the full emphasis is on safety and how we ensure that we have a safe, both a safe design and then, of course, safe operation, safe execution, and then ultimately into safe operation. It's top of the list, there's just no question about it. What we were always afraid of was that we have delays, disruptions offshore during the, during the fracturing process. But it went so smoothly and that was really due to the perfect preparation and the professionality of the team. London, in the summer of 2012. Some may remember it for other reasons, but for the team at Hoban, it's all about the gas. First gas for Clipper South, achieved without a single lost time injury. It's been a long time so far, a lot of work, especially now on the drilling side. So we are very excited about that and looking forward to it. It's a big step in the development of the field and I think it's a big step for the company as well. The project was executed in amazing speed. I mean, we had project sanction in summer 2010, platform installation in summer 2011, and first production here in summer 2012. So that is a two years lead time. That is incredible fast for an ENP project. And that is possible only when you have very efficient processes and very good people on board.